7-Eleven. I hope you guys are doing great. I am here with your energy check-in. And um, it's interesting today. I mean, there's a lot going on in the 5D. And I think it has a lot to do with this moon energy. So if you didn't see a lot transpire in the 3D in your physical world, it's because there's a lot of activity in the 5D right now. Okay. What I've done today is the usual, right? Overall energy, masculine, feminine, their crowning energy towards each other, head, heart, and environment. I'm looking at um, the theme of their connection then drilling down into the connection. And I've got the Akashic Records for all of you guys today. Uh, because I know you guys are always interested in that, but you know, that's a reading that you don't want to do too much. So, um, I, you know, just go ahead and I do that. I don't know, maybe once a month or so just to check in to see how the soul contract is evolving. So we're going to look at the current state of the contract. Um, the other thing that I did was I went ahead and I looked at how they're both experiencing each other's energy. And then I've got a special, um, section that I have for you guys. So you want to stick around for that as related to the masculine. And then uh, we're going to close with Ganesha like we usually do. Okay. Um, for those of you who, um, watched Friday's reading, remember I have this beautiful mantra that I channeled that is on my website, nine minutes, 11 seconds, because it's very, that's a huge number. It is a number of union. It's a number of protection. And it is um, a number the that is very significant. So if you guys are following me on Instagram, I posted on Instagram why 911 is very critical. There is an urgency for twins to come together. There is an urgency for twins to come into the sacred union in the 3D on this planet uh, to raise the vibration. We're going through a lot of different things just in our physical world at this time. And 9-11 um, is that card of urgency, but it's a card of twin flame union. So I created um, a, a file where I, uh, where I downloaded this mantra that I put the energy in this mantra as I'm speaking it to protect the twins and their union. And also um, as a means to remove negative energies as far as your shadows, anything external, and to then protect that union. So it is on my website. There's a max download of three times from the website, but once you download it, you can listen to it as many times as you like from your device. Check your spam audio files, download files on your phone or device because that's where it's saved. Once you download it, it's there. It's not somewhere out in outer space. It's on your device. It's somewhere in your file folder. So make sure that you're checking your those three files that I mentioned or anywhere else um, when you download it because, you know, I'm not going to be like sending the file out again. So uh, please go to my website. If you want to book your own reading, coaching session, healing session, do so now, okay? Um, Queenoflight1111.com, that's my website. Any decks that I use on my Amazon storefront or on my website. So let's go ahead and get started with the overall energy for Divine Feminine. We have the Two of Cups and the Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords is clarified by the Two of Cups. So there is in Divine Feminine's um, overall energy, just in general, there is an, an energy of just like recuperation, perhaps even from, look at this girl sleeping, right? This is about being stuck in her head. This is about being an energy of, you know, self entrapment, maybe negative self, self speak, maybe old wounds, old fears coming back in around any partnership, even, um, around her union with her divine masculine. So her overall energy, she's feeling a little stuck in her head. She's stuck in her head about relationships. She's stuck in her head about partnerships and perhaps stuck in her head about her divine masculine. So her overall energy, we've got the strength card, right? So she's really trying to stay in her strength and her power as she heals four of swords. This is this energy of retreat, recovery. And so she's really in this energy of being in her strength, gaining her strength, right? Because she knows that the, that this next phase of this journey um, is going to continue to need her to stay in her power. So in her energy of strength, she is 
really getting in the energy of recovery, of healing, these the self-sabotage talk, this negative speak, these self-limiting beliefs. So as she gains her strength, that's where she's stuck. She's really healing this for movement forward in any of her relationships. Seven of Wands, she's in the energy of, you know, defensiveness, boundaries. Um, she's in this energy of protecting her peace. It's clarified by the hanged man. So as she is recovering, as she is healing, as she is in the suspension in any relationship, she's guarded. She's defensive. She's protecting her peace. Five of pentacles. There's this energy of self-worth, lack, self-esteem, abandonment. There's this energy that she's feeling around the past. Five of cups. This is probably part of more of what she's healing. Past issues, past regrets, past sadness of maybe being um, rejected or abandoned or not feeling like she's enough because she knows Ace of Pentacles, a new day is coming in the 3D, a new beginning, the Fool card. It's all coming. It's all coming. Trust me, it is coming. But there's a lot of healing and surrender and release that needs to occur before this new cycle begins. Bottom of the deck for Divine Masculine, we have the King of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. So he's in this energy of really becoming this visionary leader, wanting to be this leader about how to give, how to have balance in his life, how to give from a place of reciprocity, how to be charitable, how to be in this energy of being willing to receive assistance or give assistance, how to maintain balance in connections while maintaining this leadership energy, okay? So his overall energy, star card, he's healing too. There's hope, there's healing, there's renewal. Seven is sword. I love this combination because this tells me he's ready to leave this seven of swords energy behind. He's in this energy of healing self-sabotage. He's in, the, is in this energy of walking away, like really getting into this energy of just like, I'm done. I'm done with the self-sabotage. I'm done with the energy. I'm going to go at this alone and I'm going to heal myself. Seven of swords, right, is the energy of like, you know, like cutting from the grain, right? Cutting from going against the grain. Like I'm just going to go against what everybody else thinks and I'm going to just do my own thing. I'm going to do what feels right to me. This is about expanding your consciousness when it comes out with the star card. So there's a lot of healing. There's a lot of energy around him really kind of healing the old belief system, the old self-sabotage, right? The old uh, energy of deceit, of withholding judgment. He's rebirthing, re rebirthing, reinventing himself. He's rebirthing. He is good, continuing to awaken as this king of swords, because this is why he's, he's healing that seven of swords. So he's coming into his integrity, into his honesty. And, you know, it is a little cool and detached as he is, you know, rebirthing himself into this new pure, pristine light. You know, he's in this energy of healing this old shadiness. You know, he's in this energy of now rebirthing himself into the King of Swords. And look at this magician. He wants to have all the tools, all the resources. He wants to be in his mastery for his match, the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is divine feminine. She's all up in this reading as Queen of Swords. Okay, because he's ready to manifest. He wants to manifest with her. So he's working hard, Eight of Pentacles, to get himself together, to master himself, to get into this energy of confidence so he can walk. He's really working on walking away from this stuff. He's really working on walking away from the seven of swords because as he's rebirthing, he's walking away from old behaviors for things that do not serve him. He is working eight of pentacles, two eights, eight of pentacles, eight of cups. He's working on his evolution. This is why we have judgment in King of Swords. I love it. Now let's go ahead and look at the crowning energies for this reading. Shoot, all my cards are falling and you know, I have like 85 different decks here. Hold on, I don't wanna lose the bottom of my deck. Okay, so we have it, all is well in this world. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, bottom of the deck for the crowning energy as related to each other. Remember, if you guys wanna book your own personal reading, coaching session or healing session, Go to queenalight1111.com and don't forget, if you are really wanting to protect your union and your energy and yourself, 
this is the time to download that mantra to get that mantra on my website. Okay, bottom of the deck, abundance. This is the crowning energy, the bottom of the deck for the crowning energy. It has to do with abundance. I guess there's no name on this card, so I'm going to like quickly tell you what the name is of this. Hold on a second. It's really about um, this swan energy. It's, it's about this energy of common goals. So when we get these two cards, okay, these are the crowning energy, the bottom of the deck for divine masculine and feminine. So this is, this is when I say crowning energy, this is like the bottom of the deck main theme for how they are feeling about each other. Okay. So abundance, when this card comes out, this is really about you know, it's not about money. It's not about money. It's about relationships. It's about, um, you know, connections. It's about feelings. It's about good health. So this is an energy where they're like, you know, it's not about the, the material possessions. It's not about the material possessions. Bottom of the deck is the chariot card that clarifies that we've now mastered ourselves and are ready to balance ourselves to move forward in this connection because we realize that the most important thing is love and health and friendships and um, supportive and loving environments. That is abundance, not money, not cars, not homes, not those things. Abundance is love, health a great environment that you can thrive in. The next card that we have here, this is about unison. This is about common goals, shared values. So they're seeing each other as partners, right? Because there's been self-mastery. And I'll tell you right now, bottom of the deck for the clarifier is the main female. So this is the masculine seeing his feminine as the energy of abundance. This is a common we share values we have common goals this is a connection where i belong as i continue to master myself i know i belong with my divine feminine and for divine feminine this is this energy of i know that love and my environment and health and all of that this is what we're sharing now she's seeing that in her masculine right that that he is mastering himself to come towards her. So let's go ahead and, to, and get into their specific energies now. Okay, let's get into their specific energies now. That was the bottom of the deck. All right, hold on a second. All right, bottom of the deck energies for divine feminine. Manifestation. This is empress energy, magician energy like no other. Manifestation, clarified by strength. The second time we got the strength card. And the main male, which is the match to the main female, which is her divine masculine. So when the manifestation uh, card comes out, this card really is about the feminine really mastering from and manifesting from the heart, solar plexus, and the sacral chakra. So this is about keeping your heart open. This is about staying in your confidence, and this is about staying in your vulnerability. So when this card comes out, this is about manifesting from these three places, okay? From this energy so that you are in alignment to your heart's desire, to your intuition, to your sense of self, and from your creativity, your fertility, and your vulnerability. So this is where you gain your strength. This is where you gain your strength okay towards the masculine so her overall energy is that if i stay in my heart space if i stay in my confidence and in my self-worth and if i stay in my vulnerability in this energy of um of strength and power right this is how i'm gonna manifest my union i love that i love that divine feminine's second overall crowning energy for her masculine is this energy of her relationship with him this is this energy of, you know, how they have interacted in the past. This is this energy when it comes out. It's about, you know, how this, this, this photo wheel has turned. And it's about how he's played a part in her life. It's about, you know, what, what does the future bring? And this is where she gets confident. She gets a little confused, right? What's the future going to be? Look at this. So many pictures, so many cups. So this is where in her overall energy and her crowning energy, she just gets a little too much in her 
um, emotions where it starts to cloud her judgment, cloud her thinking. And so that's, you know, very much not in this alignment that we want our feminine to be. So when you think about your interactions, when you're thinking about the future, there's, it's confusing because what you're really wondering is official person, is he going to come forward as my divine masculine? Is he going to ever make it to divine masculine? I, I've got to tell you, stop focusing on that. You focus on you because I'm telling you, this masculine in this collective is, has done the work, is doing the work, and continues to do the work. Okay? Divine masculine's crowning energy towards divine feminine is the card of boundaries. This is very interesting. I was kind of like, whoa, wow, he's putting boundaries up towards this feminine. But this is good. This is good because a clear and healthy sense of self is a great foundation for love. Maybe this masculine wasn't putting boundaries up in his life anywhere before. Maybe it was a free for, I'm going to talk to this girl. I'm going to do this. I'm going to overwork. I'm going to do this. I'm going to drink. I'm going to eat. There were no boundaries. And so maybe he was sabotaging seven of swords, his energy, his spirituality, his ascension, right? Maybe dip in his, <laughs> I'm going to take that back. Maybe he was, you know, experiencing too many other relationships, right? Because he had no boundaries, right? Having, it was like having everyone text or call him and no boundaries and respect for his divine feminine, right? And, and the loyalty that he should have had to her. Here we go. Boundaries. He is setting a boundary. So don't think that it's just towards you. I really feel like, yes, it's towards you, but I feel like this is really what he's doing with his life. He's gone through a major tower and now boundaries are important. If he never had healthy boundaries before, by him placing boundaries on you in this connection at this time, this is him showing you that he is getting a clear and healthy sense of himself. So that he can build a great foundation of love, not only for himself, but for you to be this divine masculine that you want. It's clarified by the three of wands, which is telling me three of wands and the change card, which is telling me, remember three of wands, the bottom of the deck for this is the chariot. This is about waiting for that mastery to occur so that remember bottom of the deck for this is the main female so that he can have change in this connection with his divine feminine. So he can get in this carriage and just start fresh and anew from a from a place of abundance with his divine feminine i love that i freaking love that next card that we have so this is interesting because both of them have challenges with this this crowning energy and for him this is the energy of danger and fear so his overall energy he has a lot of fears when it comes to his connection with his divine feminine right now okay you know, this is this energy of, you know, feeling like he's going through his, his worst fears. His emotions are, when they're not mastered, are getting the best of him. There's this energy where it's like, you know, he doesn't want to be fooled because now he's coming to this mastery and he wants change with her. He, you know, all of these things that he's done in the past, he's kind of like, well, now I'm in this place of vulnerability and open to love. I don't want to be completely you know, um, vulnerable and because I'm scared there might be danger. I'm, I expose myself if I open my heart out completely. So he's still working through fears, right? And what does this fear have to do with six of pentacles? I feel like this also has to do with fears about giving and receiving great fortune. This is this energy about money as well. There's this energy about, you know, divine masculine, perhaps not feeling financially sound. Okay, and, and that could be not necessarily just in money, but you know, it just could be, you know, I'm just not ready. I'm not in my for my my total fortune and my total mastery yet. That's why we got that three of wands. But this specific card, when it comes up, this great fortune card, this has to do with it's it's honestly this card when it comes out in this deck is the most enabling, most powerful, and most positive card in the deck. And what have I always said is the most powerful card in tarot, the sun card. So this is that equivalent. This is about this goddess Fortuna, 
right? This is about all the wishes coming true, about wealth and happiness and all that abundance, which was at the bottom of the deck, right? So this is really about, you know, luck having change. His fear is I want to give towards this luck, towards this fortune with my feminine, because I know that this is where I want to be. But there's fears. There are fears around you know, whether or not this relationship can improve in the way that he desires it to improve. All right. So now let's go ahead and get into head, heart and environment specifically for divine masculine and feminine. Okay. Um, the theme, the theme for masculine and feminine. So let's start with feminine. Look at this head, heart and environment when she's thinking, feeling, and is in her environment as related to her masculine, like a two of cups and door to spirit. This is that new spiritual, like awakening connection. This is that energy when the door to spirit comes up. This is the energy around, um, you know, she, she's awake, right? Our feminine's awake, like duh. But this is this energy of, I really feel like because it says coming together in this card of the two of cups i feel like this is this energy where she feels like she knows that her masculine has taken it to a whole nother level of awakening and that there is a new beginning to occur she knows it she knows it this is why she shows up as the queen of swords with the high priestess because that those two cards together and empress all over the place by the way she's in her power she's in her intuition she is using her wisdom she knows this is why she needs to rest because things are about to take off very soon so this coming together, door to spirit, this is about spiritual awakenings. This is about new beginnings. When she is in her head, in her heart, in her environment, she knows that this is coming, that this is just a momentary pause. And it was a necessary pause because, um, you know, masculine and feminine really needed to continue to heal some of these, you know, final wounds with each other. So now we have the card of, let's see, Divine Masculine. I just, I hate it when they um, redo this. Eight of, yeah, okay. So bottom of the deck for Divine Masculine, Head, Heart, and Environment. Look at this, Eight of Pentacles energy. We already got the Eight of Pentacles in his overall energy with that Queen of Swords, which we know is our Divine Feminine. Positive moving forward. He's, he's mastering himself. For this spiritual awakening, he's mastering himself through this spiritual awakening for a new spiritual beginning with his divine feminine to start this journey again in this connection towards sacred union. So what this is really telling me is, and, and it's just coming to me now, because remember, I channel real time when I turn on this camera. He's come out as the hierophant a lot here in his head and his heart. And she's come out as the high priestess a lot. So this spiritual connection is mutually known, mutually known. He knows. He knows that this is a soul connection, a spiritual connection. And that's why she's kind of like, oh my God, I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Isn't that like a weekend song? I feel it coming. I don't even know what the words are, but anyway. Um, head, heart, and environment, specifically for divine, masculine, and feminine. For the bottom of the deck for the tarot, those were the themes. Look at her. High Priestess, Four of Wands, and the Butterfly. She is in her intuition. She's knowing. She's just not saying much. She knows that things are hidden. There's a mystery right now around this union, and that is because things are changing. That is because there's a metamorphosis going on, and she knows that she needs to just stay open. This in this manifestation energy for this to come forward. Oh my God, you can't make that up. Oh my God, the bottom of the deck for her was the three of wands. So, which is, we know it's coming. Three of wands is this like, two of wands is just making a decision. Three of wands is I've made the decision. I've made the decision and I'm waiting for it to come in now. Divine masculine. Oh my God, look at this. Judgment and queen of swords. So I didn't even realize that judgment was, I knew queen of swords was here, but judgment, we already have that. Judgment King of Swords, Judgment, Queen of Swords. Oh my gosh, Judgment. This is the awakening. This is about calling things back to life. This is about second chances. This is about spiritual awakening with his Queen of Swords. Overall energy, Queen of Swords. She is the Queen of Swords. It's at the bottom of his deck for her. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry, I don't mean to get like super excited. And he has clarity. 
He has clarity. He is changing. This judgment card, Queen of Swords, Butterfly, this is about I'm evaluating. I'm having another awakening. I understand that I want another chance with my Queen of Swords, and now I want to be open to this. I want to change. I want to evolve my soul. I want to be open to this energy from my feminine. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. I mean, like, listen, I, like, see this real time with you, too. Like, I've seen the cards, but I didn't, like, wasn't channeling it. But when I start seeing it, when I'm channeling, I'm like, wow. Okay. Headspace. Divine masculine, what he thinks of divine feminine. Stand your ground. Seven of wands again with this archangel Metatron. So she's got seven of wands in her energy while she's in the hanged man state, right? So she's in this energy protecting my peace while I'm still letting things go. And he's got the seven of wands. Where did he get? Oh, it was through boundaries because boundaries is really the energy. He's standing his ground. He's using his intuition. Metatron. When archangel Metatron comes out, this is about clarity of thought okay this is about personal vision so he's just in this energy of i'm standing my ground i'm getting my thoughts clear i have a personal vision i'm ready to expand through my broader horizons there's some new perceptions i'm no longer confused all right let's see What's he thinking about? What is he no longer confused about? What is he standing his ground about in his headspace towards divine feminine? Okay, three swords. Three swords, heartbreak, betrayal, loss, sadness. What's that three swords about? Ten of wands, huge burden, huge burden. As he starts to, remember, bottom of the deck is judgment. Well, as he starts to... Get into this energy of this understanding that his feminine has always been right in front of him as his divine counterpart. He starts seeing how he has betrayed her. He starts judging himself. He starts evaluating this betrayal and it becomes a huge burden. His heartache, his pain, his sadness, his betrayal becomes a huge burden that he, that she's been this boss man you can't get any better than her right this is this energy when he's like wow she's always been nurturing she's been strong she's been a leader and i betrayed her seven of wands again so he's very defensive as he starts to evaluate these things as he starts to think about this past energy now he's seven of wands defensive ten of pentacles he wants to um, he's guarded against this long-term energy, but this is also him protecting, wanting something long-term. Why? Because the King of Swords clarifies this justice. There's this energy of this defensiveness around this long-term connection. He's trying to balance this energy out, bring justice to the situation about how he blocked her, how he has now, he's now desiring harmony and balance in the connection. All right, he's trying to come to this energy where, you know, he's feeling very guarded about building anything long term because he's just in this energy of, you know, I'm starting to see the stuff that I did. I have this clarity. I, I'm seeing through the chaos now how I, I'm sad, how this is a burden, how I, you know, betrayed my divine feminine. And now as I'm evaluating it, as I'm evaluating and judging, I'm defensive about this long-term energy while I try to balance myself out because here's the hierophant. This is the, this is, this hierophant is all about the spiritual advisement, spiritual connection, being morally correct. This is about doing, this is this energy, especially when you get justice in hierophant, this is all like a marriage, spiritual connection. Hierophant is clarified by the page of cups. So what he's seeing here is, is that there are small gestures, right? There is, you know, communication of love. There is very small attempts towards this spiritual connection. And that's what he's doing to unlock himself, to break out of this defensive energy. He's not rushing in like that old Casanova energy. As he's awakening, he's starting to and get his clarity, he's starting to get a little bit defensive. But there's like these small gestures, these small things as he's trying to set his spirit straight that this is his divine partner. These small things 
are what helps him continue to unlock out of that seven of wands because he wants change. He knows there's destiny. Look, justice here, and now we get the wheel of fortune. He knows that he wants change. He knows that he wants the cycle to change. Eight of wands clarifies that he knows that he wants to move forward. He wants to move forward. Look at this. Marriage. <laughs> Tradition. He knows you guys share the same values. Where did I get that card? Share the same values. Share the same values. I don't know. I feel like I saw that somewhere over here. Um, anyway, I've already channeled that. So he knows you guys share the same values. There's some commonality. The headspace for divine feminine. What is she thinking when she thinks of divine masculine? Look at this dedicated effort. Eight of pentacles for her. Eight of pentacles for her. He got eight of pentacles as the bottom of his deck, which is telling me that he's really working through all of this head, heart, and environment. He's working hard. And she's really working in her headspace. Remember, she's got the eight of swords at the bottom of her deck for her overall energy. So she's really working hard on her headspace and the things that she's thinking about and the things that don't serve her. So she's still really working hard on keeping her heart, her art, her art, her heart open towards the door of romance, towards this connection. Okay, she's really working hard not to get into old behaviors, old thought processes, um, all of those things. Okay, oh, shared values. Now I know that was the bottom of the deck for the crowning energy. Shared values, right? This is what his fear is, but he's trying to change, to change the cycle, to move forward because you guys share a lot of commonality. Okay, headspace for divine feminine. She's working hard to stay open for this door to romance with her masculine. Six of wands, she wants victory. Victory in movement forward. Victory in mastery in communication. She's really wanting to have more stable, consistent communication because she feels the boundary. Ace of cups, there's this energy of love, this energy of self-love right? She does want to have this love knight of swords and she's eager to move forward with words and thoughts and talk. But there's a lot of emotions here, right? Remember seven of cups because she's feeling the boundary. Magician in her headspace, she wants to manifest reciprocity and start to go out, start to go out with her masculine again, start to exchange in the 3D again, but eight of swords. There's that stuck energy. There's that mental entrapment that she's trying to heal because she desires this too much. She desires this a lot. So her desire um, to move forward quickly into the success, which she can feel is coming. And I get it. Listen, I get it. You can all feel the union. You know, it's almost here. And so you want to start like moving towards it, but you can't force the timing. You've got to let it occur in the way that that the divine has done this. So you continue to get into this energy of manifestation, stay in this alignment and get rid of this old thought process that puts you in your stuck energy of your headspace. Because masculine's working through some big stuff. He's at the end of it, 10 of wands. He's at the end of it. You know, we've got 10 of pentacles. He's been blocking it, blocking it, blocking it. But this is telling me when we have all these tens, the wheel, he's coming to the end of this because remember, he has clarity. He's gaining clarity in his heart space. See, this is where he's judging himself, right? He wants to move forward. Positive movement forward the bottom of the deck for obstacles and challenges. Five of wands and deceit. So this obstacle challenge is this deception. Part of his fears. Right? In his heart space, he knows that he's deceived himself. Seven of swords. He's healing that. He knows he's deceived his feminine. And there's obstacles and there's challenges. And he knows justice card in his head space. He's got to set things right. He knows that. He, it's going to take his mental strength. This is why he's gaining clarity here. Stability in his head and heart. And for him to, to you know, do it. He has to do it. He knows he has to do it. And look at him. He's got the six of wands. He wants victory in the spiritual connection. He wants to have victory in doing the right thing towards the spiritual connection. He wants to be ethical. He wants to be moral. Because guess what? He wants a new beginning with you in his heart. He wants victory in this connection. Hereford, two times. Head and heart. 
He's coming into this alignment that he wants this new beginning. Ace of Cups, but he's loving himself, but he's also guarded about loving you right now because he needs to stand alone to continue on his journey of experience and understanding because he has some confusion. He's overwhelmed by his emotions. And so he's observing them right now because he wants to manifest a magician card. We already got that in his overall energy. He's confused. He's overly emotional. He's procrastinating and he's observing these feelings. And this is why he's not communicating as much. This is why there's a boundary because there's a lot of stress around his emotions towards the spiritual connection, towards this queen of pentacles. You know I had to get another, another card towards his twin flame. He knows you're the one. He knows you're the one. In fact, I think I'm going to title this reading that way. He knows you're the one. He knows it. Heart space for divine feminine. Rest and reconsideration. This is that nine of wands. Envy. This is that card of feeling separation and lack. She's tired. Feminine's tired. She's resting. She's like, is this going to happen? Is he going to be divine masculine? She's feeling the separation because she feels the union. So let's see what's going on in feminine's heart space as related to divine masculine. There's a lot going on in her heart space. Okay. First card, Hierophant. Faith. Seven of Swords. This is this energy of really feeling like you have a spiritual connection, but it's just like being withheld. It's been sabotaged because it was treated like a fling, right? I feel like there's some old wounds. It's like people were careless with something so beautiful, so sacred. This is what's happening in her heart. It's like you were careless. You treated something that was so lucky and beautiful as a fling. And this is where she has some pain. Page of Swords. She's in this energy of observation around any communication or small gesture. Right? Because there's no movement forward. There's heartbreak. This is her heartbreak. Sadness. Betrayal. But the divine is coming in. Because you have to crumble that to stay in this Empress energy. And so you are getting logical Queen of Swords. Here you are, Queen of Swords. You're staying logical. You're staying in your wisdom. Because you know your Divine Masculine in your intuition is healing. Queen of Swords and the Star card. You know. So it's time for you to stay detached. Stay cool, stay in your high vibe, stay divine feminine. Look at this Empress High Priestess. Stay in that energy. Stay in that energy. Heal yourself because you know, divine feminine, that there is major healing happening, major movement forward happening with your divine masculine. So, environment for divine masculine. What's happening in his environment? Look at this material and spiritual prosperity. Six of Pentacles, Solar Plexus, Archangel Shamuel. He's getting ready to exchange. Solar plexus is all about action. All about action. This is how he needs to lead. He's getting ready to feel prosperous on the inside so he can feel prosperous on the outside so he can take action. He can take action towards his feminine. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is stirring in his environment as related to divine feminine. Nine of Pentacles. This is about gaining that confidence. This is about feeling very confident to come forward and move forward towards Divine Feminine. It's clarified by the Sun card. The, the most positive card in the deck. Just like Great Fortune. So it's, it's it, I'm not even shocked anymore when I do these readings because it's like, wow, look at it came up here and now it is here. And everything in his overall energy has to do with his Divine Feminine. So this is about illumination, confidence, success, and positivity. That's what he's trying to manifest because he wants victory. Next card, Page of Pentacles. Wants to make an offer. He's thinking about how to come forward with his offer because he hasn't given up. But he's stressed. He's worried. Maybe he's even sick. Three of Wands. He's made the decision. Now he's waiting for the results 
to be this king of wands. And guess what? He's going to release himself quick. And I'm telling you, he's going to surprise you. He will surprise you. But he's in hermit energy right now. He's doing that soul searching. He's continuing his clarity of vision. He's continuing to bring in this three of wands energy so he can instill change towards great fortune with you. Because again, he wants to be nine of pentacles. If this is not a single masculine, nine of pentacles, hermit, nine of pentacles, I don't know what is. There's, this is a single masculine just focused on his spiritual awakening because he knows his feminine is the one. Hermit, nine of pentacles, guess what? Look at this is what they're telling you, feminines. I hope you've released this third party fear because in his environment, he is soul searching to gain his confidence, but he's at the crossroads. This is why you're fearful, crossroads. Because this, look at this, free will, weighing the options, deciding. So you know I had to get another card. What about this road? Death, loss, absent-minded, discouraged, defeated. He's st sitting at the crossroads, just feeling very defeated. Because he's going through this huge, huge type of change within himself. So, you know, I had to just, I was like, you know, this is the part I was telling you guys. Stay tuned because this is where I want, I dug in deeper. I wanted to know what is happening at this crossroads with divine masculine as related to his feminine. So I broke out the reading and I got a couple of cards and here I'm using my divine connections uh, my, I'm sorry, my Queen's Journey Oracle deck, um, and this is available for sale So, uh, on my website. So Battle Royale is the bottom of the deck. There's battle. It's like Five of Wands energy in my deck. That there's There's been conflict, not only for him internally, and ex but externally with his feminine. So what is he doing at the crossroads? Look at this, clarified by the Five of Cups. He's very sad. He's... He's in this energy of, look at, I have all these three cups, these third party situations, all these things. And here's that union, this two of cups that I missed with my feminine. So this is what he's doing. There's judgment of himself, judgment of his past, judgment of poor, of poor choices, which create a conflict externally outside in his life with other people, including his feminine. So this is what he's doing at the crossroads. He's battling himself. He's reliving the past sadness, regrets. All right. So let's see. First card out for him. Unawakened Prince. There's this energy of, I don't know how I'm unawakened to do something. I said, what is he unawakened to? King of Wands, how to take action. Remember, we just got that here in his environment. Three of Wands, King of Wands. He's waiting to get into the energy to like, boom, surprise you. So this has specifically to do with Divine Feminine. So he's unawakened how to take action. Pauper. He's really in this energy of just feeling poverty, feeling lack, feeling less than, and he's hiding it. Seven of swords. That's what he's hiding. He's hiding that he's feeling bad. Masquerade. Another card of hiding. What is he hiding? Nine of swords. He's hiding his stress. He's hiding his anxiety. He's trying to be this magician. And that's why he's focused on loving himself right now. Because he's really in his heart for you, feminine. He's in his heart for you because he wants this union. Two of cups. What is he working hard on? Eight of pentacles, eight of cups. When, you're, when you get the eight of cups, you're looking for the two of cups. And here it is. His heart is opened for this union with you. Because guess what? You are his divine queen. You are his divine feminine. You are the one that he wants to celebrate with. That he wants reunion with. You are the one. You're the one. Oh my God, isn't that a song by the Doobie Brothers or something? Oh no, that's still the one. Man, it's still the one. That works too. All right, now let's get into the theme of the connection. The theme of the connection. So remember, remember in this part, I do the, I do, <laughs> I do the um, reading based on what the masculine's perspective is the feminine's perspective, and then, most importantly, spirit's perspective. Bottom of the deck energy shows there's a lot going on in the 5D. Spirit guides, angels are here. From the masculine's perspective, they're helping him become the emperor. From the feminine's perspective, they're helping her stay focused on her nurturing, nurturing herself, 
getting in this energy of alignment. Sorry, my car, so my cards fell. Um, getting in this energy of just focused on her grounding, focused on grounding this connection. Because why? Spirit is saying, Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups. You get ready for your Ten of Cups. Get ready for your Ten of Cups. It's coming. Spirit's helping. So I will tell you, in my Divine Connections Oracle deck, the energies there show 3D and 5D energies. I specifically created it that way because it's very important for you all to understand what energies are in the 3D and what energies are in the 5D. A lot of people spend so much time in the 5D looking at the best version of the masculine and the feminine and they don't get out of that energy and they stay stuck. So that is why I created this deck to see how much of your connection is even in this earth today. All right. And these can always change. So if you're interested in purchasing my Divine Connections Oracle deck, that's on my website too. All right. And, it, and I also have a tarot deck, obviously, that is my Divine Masculine Tarot deck, which is the Divine Connections Tarot. And I have a Queen's Journey Tarot for my Divine Feminines, which has the Oracle too. All right. Theme of the connection. Look at this. 3D energy. Things are being removed from our way in the 3D. There's a lot that's being cleared. So when the fire comes in, clears the road. What are we clearing the road for? Empress. From Masculine's perspective, he's clearing the road to come to his Empress. What does the Feminine say about this? For our union. And, mass, and the Spirit is saying we're clearing the road to get you all outside of your head. Get out of your head. You're imprisoned in your head. And here we have it in the 5D, removing obstacles. Ganesha is here. Love Ganesha. Ganesha's here, removing obstacles. Removing obstacles from the masculine's perspective to our union. Feminine says, removing obstacles from us having this balanced exchange. Spirit is saying, remove, removing obstacles that keep us from our self-mastery. Next card, testing the water. This is a 3D card. Test in the water. Masculine says, just defeating. I can't. I don't want to be in and out with you anymore. I don't want to be the Casanova anymore. I don't want to be the Knight of Wands anymore. It's too conflicting. <clears throat> it's too defeating. I don't want to test the waters with you. Feminine saying testing the waters just gives her stress. It gives me anxiety when you're in and out like that. And Spirit is saying testing the water, Emperor. Now he's not testing the water. Emperor is not going to test the water with you anymore. He's done with that energy. So if he's not giving to you, it's because he's set up boundaries, because he knows if he's going to come back, he's coming back. He's not coming back to be like, hey, and then disappear for 10 days. 3D, a 5D card, Shakti Ma, rebirth. There is a rebirth percolating in the 5D. This is why feminines ground. Masculine's perspective. Yes, chariot. Rebirth. There is a rebirth happening of this connection so that there's mastery for movement forward. Empress is rebirthing and creating. This is what she's saying. Feminine. And then spirit is saying, oh yeah, there is a huge breakthrough. There is spiritual awareness. There is clarity. We are no longer confused. Oh my God, it's the first time I saw this. Look at this. Is that not an 11? Oh my gosh. Are these eyes? This looks like eyes too. And this looks like the third eye. Interesting. First time I saw that. So there is a breakthrough in this rebirth. Masculine is saying there's mastery to move forward. That's what's rebirthing. Feminine is saying I'm rebirthing myself to stay as the empress, stay in this energy because this three of swords energy gets me every time. And spirit is saying there's clarity, there's truth, there is awakening distorted masculine that's the energy of i'm not all together i'm not really aligned my emotions are all over the place hence this king of cups with the nine nine of swords what is masculine saying about that i'm distorted i don't want to just come in and be a player i'm distorted about that i don't want to do that that's why he's like yeah uh -uh, i'm not testing the water with you feminine saying he's distorted because he's unbalanced spirit is saying he's distorted because He's overly emotional, overly emotional. There's a lot of fantasizing. Oh my God, look at this. It's 11, 11. There's a lot of fantasizing. There is this temptation to come forward, but then there's this block within him because he knows he's got to do the work and do it right. There's procrastination, chaos, seven of cups, right? We got that in his heart space with the page of swords. He's observing this chaos. 
So that's why he's distorted. He hasn't balanced completely his head on and his heart to be that king of wands, who is this leader who knows what he wants. Telepathy. So in the 5D, you guys are communicating, but this is also about being on the same page. Remember, shared values, common goals. What's masculine saying? Yeah, I want to marry you. I want union. Feminine is saying, I have truth. I have clarity. I, I know. I have my vision. I have my vision that you are my person. Spirit is saying, Queen of Wands. This is that. Spirit is saying, you have magnetically and confidently attracted this telepathy. I said, what was attracted? Look at this. Her divine masculine growing. Growing into you. You have magnetically attracted this success into your connection. You are the Queen of Wands. And with another deck, I clarified it and it came out as a high priestess. So I know Queen of Wands is our divine feminine. And I already know, I'm not going to, like I said on Friday, do any more third party readings on this unless I really feel like I'm feeling that energy. But Nine of Pentacles, Hermit in his environment with no other queen in his overall energy but our divine feminine, he knows you're the one. There's no one that can compare. So if you can understand that, even in this crossroads, he sees you as his divine queen. Even in this connection, he sees you as his empress. There's no other person. So please heal that. Heal that. Let's drill down into the connection now. We have five of cups, knight of cups, metamorphosis. This is this energy of sadness, regrets, how to move forward and change the story change things this time how do we do that how do we do that that is what's happening in this connection today okay so let's go ahead and take a look first card out we have eight of cups Ev evolving walking away what are we walking away queen of cups our divine feminine is walking away oh you know what i totally forgot to do the environment now that i know because queen of cups so let me pause sorry guys like getting ahead i got sidetracked because i started doing his like road map here so anyway let's go back to divine feminine then we'll do uh go back to the details of the connection well here she is seeking the truth seven of swords woman holding a heart this is her energy is she's like i'm going to continue to see the truth of the situation from my heart space not from my paranoia not from my not from my fears i'm going to stay in my heart space i'm going to pull the veil I'm going to look at this from my high priestess energy, from my clarity, and I'm going to stay in my heart space. So now, what about her environment as related to her masculine, Seven of Swords, right? She's going to, she's the only one, by the way, they got the, the Seven of Swords here in her um, environment. He got it in his overall energy, which is what he's healing, and she's still healing it as well. Death card, ending transformations she's trying to stay strong because she knows her masculine will come forward that he's going through a transformation he's going through a change at this time ten of swords this is an ending to stress of this stalemate she's like i don't want to stress about this like no movement this delay anymore she's really trying to end this stress and ground she, but she's excited too, right? At the same time, she wants to move forward towards the Ten of Cups, but she knows it can't happen until they both finish the work, until they both cleaned out their side of the street. So then there's this unknown. There's some fear, but she's using her intuition about her King of Pentacles that they will overcome these barriers and build a bridge back into union. So again, now the connective energy, right? There's sadness about how to move forward and change the story. Eight of Cups, Queen of Cups. She's Divine Feminine. Eight of Cups in her environment. She's walking away. What's she walking away from? Being entangled. Walking away from an old storyline. Walking away from where she feels stuck in her head. The Star card. There's healing about this Eight of Swords. They're healing this mental entrapment. They're healing these fears about the moon's energy about being so sensitive. The heavy burden right now, 10 of wands, is their wishes and how to change the cycle. The conflict is the small communication that's going back and forth while they're both estranged. The stuck energy again, eight of swords again, is the king of cups. Our masculine, remember, he's got the nine of swords. He's, 
He's still trying to master his emotions and find his way towards you. Find his true north. But guess what? Stalemate? Done. We're done with the stalemate. We're done feeling cursed, feeling baggage. Done. Done, 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 done. Okay? So let us now go to what haven't I not done yet? Oh, let's go. I'm gonna let me go to how are they experiencing each other? Okay. Bottom of the deck energy for how they are experiencing each other's energy. Okay. We have Imrama, wonder, voyage, crossing deep waters, pilgrimage journey of the soul. They are on this journey right now, knee deep in the journey and their souls are evolving. So how are they experiencing each other? That they know that this is a soul connection, that they have had to travel through the depths of their emotions and their shadows, how they had to go on their pilgrimage to find each other. How is divine masculine experiencing his feminine? Look at this, sulky in her skin. He's seeing her as single and fabulous and authentic. He's seeing her in no fear mode. He's seeing her in this energy where she is who she is. And I'm able to see her now without judgment, without judging her, without judging myself. How is divine masculine seeing or experiencing rather um, his, her masculine's energy? Yamaya. She's seeing him being reborn. She's seeing him come back, come out into this sun's energy to be this divine masculine. She's seeing this as this old soul. She is seeing and experiencing her masculine rebirth. And now let's go into the Akashic. All right, Akashic records. Bottom of the deck energy, Hilarion. Okay, not hilarious. Hilarion. <laughs> so what about Hilarion? What about it? <clears throat> when Hilarion comes out as the bottom of the deck, this is where y'all have to start your with use your wisdom. This is why we have so much King of Swords, Queen of Swords energy coming out. This is about we understand the spirituality. We're understanding this. This is also this energy of your spirit guides and angels are here to help you at this part of the journey. They've always been there. This is why we have allies at the bottom of the deck for their connection. But this is also about open to the energy of just getting in your logic, but in your spirit. This is about balancing your 5D and your 3D self. This is this ascended master who has a wonderful connection to the both of you to help you with truth and healing and your logical mind. So this is them saying, we're here. We're here to help you use your spirit and your logic. This is for both of you. This is why we have high priestess here with the empress and the queen of swords. This is why we have the king of swords and the king of wands. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the first card that we have. We have the card of the Five of Forces. The Five of Forces comes out and it's summer and winter. And this is, we're in, we're going, we're in fall right now, right? So this doesn't necessarily have to be with the seasons. But what this is telling me is right now, you know, this is a card of, you know, we're, we're going into this energy of hibernation, of soul searching, of yin activity, of this energy of really, getting into the energy of knowing when to take action and knowing when to go within. And there's this energy of, I really feel like for both of them, she's got to be in the four of swords. She has to go into this winter energy and just be more receptive while the masculine is in that energy with her, but trying to figure out how to get in to the yang energy to create change. There's this energy of the two worlds, two of scrolls next, what's happening with the connection, which is this, we're kind of balancing the in and out of our 3D and 5D worlds. We're trying to balance these together because we're trying to blend this for union. Oh, and this is the card I don't like at all when it comes out. It's called up in the air. When I get this card, spirit's basically putting a piece of tape over my mouth and my eyes and my third eye, which is telling me they're not going to tell me anything more. They're not going to tell me anything more. They're going to say right now, this is up in the air because there's free will at hand. 
right? There's free will at hand. And there's free will always at hand. But this is also a card that when it comes up that says that if you know too much, you're going to mess it up. So it's up in the air. It's up in the air. The last card is the only thing that you need to know right now is balance is occurring in the connection. So use your logical mind. Use your spirit. Use your lessons. Show us how you are applying them now because balance is coming. Justice is coming. But we can't tell you much more than that. So we have to trust spirit. We have to operate in faith. We have to. Have to. So I will respect that. And I didn't push forward. Uh, let's close this reading now with how is the masculine and feminines, um, how are their souls evolving to move towards union with each other? Balance. We got this card two times. If there's any real message, have to maintain balance, stay grounded, and stay in this childlike expression of innocence. Stay innocent. Start fresh. It's a time to no longer carry the past with you anymore. Have this energy of innocence. Have this energy that, um, you know, listen carefully, right, to what you need, what you want in your own heart. This is also this energy of trusting your inner knowing and your inner senses. It's about being patient and finding joy in the sim simple things. Allow time to just play, to be childlike, to raise your vibration. That's how it can help you ground. That's how it'll help you stay in balance because things are going to unfold. We're just not meant to know how right now. So divine feminine, your soul is evolving in the energy of self-worth and Ganesha is helping you to relax. So when the self-worth card comes out, this is very interesting to me because, you know, y'all may think, we don't have any self-worth issues, but clearly this card keeps coming up, right? This energy keeps coming up. There are some things that are still affecting self-worth and people are like, I feel confident. I feel great. I'm in my power. But the self-worth can come from, you may still be feeling a little challenged because you're waiting for your masculine to choose you. You're waiting for him to choose this connection, which is then compounding this five of pentacles self-worth energy. Remember, we just got that in her, in her overall energy. So this is sometimes the hardest part of the journey is believing you're worthy of the trip. You are worthy. You are worthy. You chose this connection. You chose these lessons. You chose. You chose you. You chose the lessons. You chose this cycle. You chose what you wanted to experience. You're enough. Don't compare yourself, your journey, your existence to anyone else. Your journey is your own. And don't give your personal power to other people, which can be draining. So Ganesha is helping you chill. Ganesha is helping you relax. Ganesha is in this energy of helping you to relax so that you can keep your vibration high. So you can keep your health in, good, in a good place. So that your mood is good. Your relationships will thrive. And your overall well-being. All right? Ganesha is there helping you relax. What about Divine Masculine? Look at this, hope. They're helping him stay in this energy of hope. Ganesh is helping him keep a positive outlook. I love that because remember, he's in this energy of, of loss, defeat, discourage at the crossroads. He's at the crossroads feeling very defeated. And so this energy of hope is how his soul is evolving at this time. And this is really about you know, behind the passing of all these dark clouds, all these towers, everything that he's gone through, the sun's going to shine. And you are helping by raising your vibration and your light. The sun is shining. The sun will, this is why he experiences you as the sun so much. So it's not just necessarily about staying positive through the storm, but it's understanding and truly seeing the imbalance and the wounds within him that attract this energy to him. This is why boundaries is important for him. All right? Clouds will pass. Things will pass. You will have renewed clarity, which he's already getting. But Ganesh is helping him get through this cloudy time to keep this positive outlook. All right? And they're saying to him, how you feel depends on your mental out attitude, right? This is about 
remembering the circumstances aren't good or bad, they're neutral. It's about how you approach the, the situation that determines the outcome. So try to stay positive. Positive action helps shift things back to happiness, all right? Happiness gives you the sun's energy again. You, feminine, as the queen of wands, will help him grow, all right? Oh my gosh, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. And again, if you want to book your own personal reading with me, healing session, coaching session, go to queenalight1111.com. Sending you all so much love. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.